Hello everyone. I have considered doing this for some time and a guy I know called David who runs my own devices channel has prompted me to record this. He's uh, he shot a video in response to Danny at GR Research and GR Research, if you're not familiar with them, is a company that will take a, a product from a speaker manufacturer he will scrutinize that product and then find a way of making it sound better. And Danny's method is 100% through measurement. He will show you all of the measurements. He's very thorough with that and he will explain exactly what components were upgraded and then offer that as a kit. And I quite like that idea because if you've got a pair of whatever loudspeakers and you quite like them, but you think you, maybe you could get a little bit more out of them, that kit will probably do that, but that's according to GR research and according to the measurements. You're not ever able to listen to that pair of speakers. They're not available for demo. You can't go into a hi-fi shop and demo them and test them for yourself. It's not possible. Apparently GR research has, Danny has invited people to go to his and listen to them. And unless you could bring a stock pair and a pair that he's modified to A, B, switch between the two, it's not really gonna tell you a lot because you don't know how they sounded originally. Now, David has called him out because Danny has shot a video calling out all the speaker or hi-fi reviewers. And a lot of what Danny says is completely true, particularly with the magazines, how things used to be, that magazines were paid for huge amounts of advertising. So if, if they gave a very good, thorough, positive review, everybody was a winner because the magazine got the money from advertising the manufacturer of said goods that were being reviewed, people would buy them, or the press, the words would get out there, and any, any sort of press on a product, as they say, any news is good news. But what David is saying, he's calling Danny out because I think David feels personally insulted by this. Now, my channel is way smaller than David's and David's is way smaller than GR Research. GR Research is a business. He shoots those videos as a sales pitch to generate business. And that's not a bad idea at all, in all honesty. But what miffs me is, unless you bought them, I mean, I had considered doing this. I had considered buying two pairs of speakers probably not high-end speakers, sending one set off to get them done by GR Research and then I'd A-B comparison, A-B test them myself. But it's not worth it. It's not worth it for me because I'm pretty sure that if you spend enough time and money on an average to medium level loudspeaker, you'll be able to improve on it because all loudspeakers bar ultra high-end are built to a budget. So if you took any loudspeaker that you have in your house at the minute, took the crossover out and looked at the inductors, looked at the resistors, looked at the capacitors, looked at the wiring, looked at the quality of the cabinet construction and looked at the quality of the drive units. If you were prepared to invest a few hundred pounds into that pair of speakers, you'd be able to improve them. If you had the measuring equipment that Danny's got, you'd be able to really accurately improve them. So. I think this is a really funny situation that I understand David being offended by this to some degree and wanting to call Danny out. I honestly don't think Danny will respond to David's video. If he does, it's great, but I honestly don't see it. For myself, I think any of you out there who are into hi-fi are gonna be intelligent enough to make out and make up your own mind. You've got to realise that any, any of the videos I've done, I'm offering a subjective perspective on what I think of the speakers in my room. And I've offered sound clips. They don't really tell you the full story. They don't. I am not in any way interested in making money out of this channel, which is why I've demonetized it. I've got copyright claims all over all of my videos because I did it for fun. I didn't do it for financial gain. And I think that's where, uh, where some of this has all got a little bit twisted up. That, David, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to say this, and I do consider you a nice bloke and you have given me plenty of information on turntables and we've discussed speakers in the past. 
I've given you advice on Celestian products, but you're generating interest and subscribers because you want to generate money to be able to buy in new equipment to keep the channel going. I've posted a video on here before saying that I had to stop. I couldn't continue because it was uneconomically viable for me to do so. I have tried to get product sent to me and the only person who was prepared to do it was Alan Clark at Alcris Audio, who I'm eternally grateful for because he believed in his product enough to let it be scrutinized. And I did. And as luck would have it, they are a fantastic sound and pair of speakers. Both sets he sent me were really good. And that was my honest, subjective review on those speakers. The same with any of the ones that I've owned, and most of the speakers that I've reviewed are my own. Um, I'm sorry, David, I, I just don't see the point in that video. I don't really see the point in this video, in all honesty, and I may not even air it. I have shot one like this before, because... <laughs> Realistically, who cares what Danny at GR Research is up to? His business model is successful. He can show you the measurements that show that it has improved the measurements. But measurements are only half of the story. And anybody I know out there who's into hi-fi, particularly loudspeakers, knows that. That you can have speakers that don't measure all that well. Some really don't have good measurement, but they sound phenomenal. And the reverse is true as well. There are speakers out there with impeccably flat frequency response. Do the spectral decay and the cabinets are phenomenal. The speed of the drivers is phenomenal. No resonance in there. Everything's great and they sound dull and dead. Realistically, anybody out there, you need only one tool to judge what you think. And that's these. And once you've heard them, You'll know in yourself whether you do or don't like them. I've had an interesting journey recently myself that I've tried to improve upon what I had and actually made it worse because I'd overcomplicated the system. I've stripped it all back down to bare basics, made it far more simplistic, and actually I'm enjoying it as you should. I'm able to sit back and listen to the music rather than continuously scrutinising and analysing my equipment, which is no fun. It's not fun at all, it really isn't. That's partly the reason why I haven't put out any videos at the minute. I will be doing a video fairly shortly, which is gonna pit the Falcon Acoustics LS35As against the Chartwell LS35s from Graham Audio. I've listened to them, I've heard them, and they're very interesting. The differences are quite uncanny, and I will save that for a video, but this is just a short, Getting it off my chest really because GR Research's videos have bugged me for a while. They really have. And I've had people message me asking about it. And really, I don't care. Crack on, Danny, because if it's working for you, that's great. If your customers are happy, that's great. That's absolutely fine. But for you to then start calling out people who are reviewing speakers and saying that they're not ready, that's quite interesting. Because what that says to me is not the reviewer's not ready to hear them, you're worried that they will poo-poo your product because that is damaging to your business. And no one would want that. No one would want that. No one wants something tarnishing their name, but that's exactly what you do to every single product from a company that comes into you. As an individual, you're scrutinizing it, analyzing it, and improving upon it, and actually poo-pooing their name and promoting your name and yet you're unwilling to do that in reverse. So, I don't know, maybe one day I'd buy a GR Research pair of speakers or see if I could find a pair, but I'm not really bothered. I don't care. If you're doing it and it's improving it and your customers are happy, that's all that matters. Anyway, David, I hope he does reply to your video. I really do, because that would be good promotion for your channel and a little bit of controversy does always mix things up a bit. And something else I'd like to say personally, that apparently Danny says there are hardly any negative reviews out there. Well, I reviewed a pair of Kef speakers that I bought and I thought they were absolutely crap. And I said as much on the video, they were terrible. Now, they would have been an ideal candidate for a GR research type facility to modify. But realistically, the cost involved in improving them 
you'd have been better off just buying a better pair of kefs in the first place. So if you'd have took the cost of the speakers, add in the kit, you could have bought a better pair of kefs in the first place, which is why kef make better pairs, because it is all down to a budget. Always is. It's always down to a price point. Anyway, that's a little rant for today. I will shoot a video in the upcoming weeks. I've just spent ages messing around with my own system, as I'm sure most of you guys do, and concurred that trying to make it better by making it more complicated is actually not the way to go. So <laughs> I've learned something over this past few weeks, but I will get a video out soon. Take care, guys. Catch up with you soon.